Okay guys, in this lecture we're going to do an example on bolts and then we are going to introduce uh, the analysis of uh, bolt groups. In this example what we have is we have a 5 eighths of an inch, 11 NC, basically a coarse pitch, uh, SAE5, the grade of the bolt is subjected to a 5 uh, kilopounds fluctuating load, so plus minus 5 kilopounds. The connection will be reused the joint constant C is equal to 0 0.28 and we would like to find those three safety factors that we have discussed so load factor, uh, safety factor for joint separation and safety factor for fatigue using the Goodman criteria uh, how do we do this? so load factor basically when you are dealing with bolts what you have to do is basically just apply the equations that we have introduced so the first step is to find the load factor is equal to n number of bolts sp 80 minus fi divided by sp uh, the first step is we need to find fi the preload and they told us that the load is reusable so if the load is reusable then the preload is going to be equal to 0 0.75 80 times sp uh, 0 0.75 80 so 80 of a bolt that is 5 ace you would calculate this to be 0 0.226 and uh, this is from table 8.2 in our notes and uh, uh, and the proof strength of uh, of what what how do you get the proof strength is based on the grade 5 proof strength would be 85 ksi so we calculate the preload to be 14.4 kilopounds now we can find calculate our load factor uh, so since we are only applying uh, the safety factor on a single bolt there's only one bolt in the assembly and is equal to 1 SP was just calculated that 85 multiplied by 0 0.26 minus 14.4 divided by C. How did I calculate C? It is a joint constant, right? If I don't give you, if you don't have this, then you can basically calculate the stiffness of the bolt and the stiffness of the member and calculate C, right? Which was equal to KB divided by KB plus KM. Uh, and that is really it so this is your load factor uh, joint separation factor occurs when the force exceeds the compressive forces of uh, the preload in the bolts uh, so the joint separation factor is going to be fi divided by p uh, 1 minus c and i would let you guys calculate the safety joint safety factor for joint separation in the case where you have many bolts how would you calculate that uh, you guys should do this as an exercise uh, so the safety factor in this case we have fi we have p 1 minus 0 0.28 would be equal to 4 now the last one we need to find the safety factor uh, for fatigue of that bolt and we know our load is fully fluctuating uh, so we know our alternating stress right we know our p max and p min are equal and the opposite right so we can calculate our alternating uh, which is equal to cp uh, times 280 which is equal to 3.1 uh, ksi uh, and uh, we need to get our uh, preload stress which is fi over 80 uh, essentially we are doing this equation right uh, we are calculating this equation uh, the endurance limit uh, or the safety time is equal to 2 se uh, SUT 80 minus FI divided by CP SUT plus SC. Uh, what we need to know is uh, we need to know all these values. So uh, essentially, uh, we know our P is going to be in this case equal to uh, 500. Uh, we know our SUT, we know our SE, and then we know our FI, the preload, and then uh, we know our 80. Uh, we get SUT from table 8.9. SE from table 817 that I just showed you and from this you can calculate that safety factor for fatigue failure uh, there's one more thing uh, so when you are when we are analyzing if you guys remember when we are when we were analyzing basically uh, the max stress on the bolt and then the min uh, if that force P basically if that force P is compressive we don't actually take that into account right uh, why because uh, we are only analyzing uh, the tension forces right uh, 
if p basically is negative right uh, you would actually still have uh, tension on the bolt so it doesn't really matter if uh, the external force becomes negative right if the external force becomes negative you actually still have tension on the bolt because of the tension that is why we only in the fatigue failure of bolts you only consider the positive force p applied right so just uh, now do a brief diagram over here so this is your bolt and this is a nut and p was here right so if p became compressive it doesn't really matter right so if p became compressive it's like you are trying to basically apply that force p and that force p will not be able to actually create compression or reduce the tension in the bolt right uh, because the minimum tension in the bolt will always be equal to the preload it can never be less as a result of you applying a force over here it would have to be a huge force to, to do this and that wouldn't actually cause any difference uh, because it's very difficult to actually compress the member to put the bolt basically under less tension okay guys so uh, this is the example on uh, on a fatigue failure of bolts and it's pretty basic all you have to do is simply apply that equation uh, you have your preload you have at sut all these values based on the tables that i provided for you in these notes and in my video lectures all right guys so uh, now we are going to be analyzing um, bolt groups analysis and uh, you typically uh, see bolt groups on large structures uh, you have you know large portion of uh, metal or wood for example that need to be uh, fixed to another structure and basically we use uh, bolt groups uh, so i have a question for you guys so in the case of let's say i have uh, a member and let's say this guy is a wall right here and i have a bolt over here and then a bolt over here and by the way here essentially we are looking at the shear of bolts uh, there is no tension anymore so here we are looking at bolts as if they are pins all right so here we're not applying that concept of applying a preload on the bolt and then causing friction between this plate and then uh, this wall so if i have a force p applied on these two bolts uh, one and then bolt two uh, which bolt do you think will fail first as a result of this force p so this is bolt one and this is bolt two so what you would uh, so typically you would think that uh, you know it's it's not very easy to actually think which one would actually fail first Here's how we're going to analyze these groups. Basically, we're going to find the centroid of these two bolts. In this case, the centroid of these two bolts is in the middle. Then the next step is I'm going to find the moment of this force P relative to this centroid. Basically, it's going to be the perpendicular distance from the centroid to that force. So if that distance is L, basically, I'm going to replace this force P by this moment, right, which is P times L. All right, so I have P times L, which is a moment of that force and l is the distance or the perpendicular distance between that force p and the centroid once i have the moment then the force p will actually i want to put that force p like this and then now i can move the force and then i move the moment contribution of that force relative to these two bolts so i'm going to zoom in back so these are the two bolts right i have my moment m which is equal to p times l and my force i'm gonna actually uh, put my force over here this has to be p over 2 right so i'm gonna have p over 2 which is a shear force created by that force on these two bolts so p over 2 and then p over 2 applied on each bolt and then the moment so now i want to look at the force contribution of each of the moment on this force so this moment will basically create that force right p times l right uh, you know moment is equal to force times distance right so the force is equal to moment divided by distance so it's pl divided by that distance right and i'm going to call that distance a so and this is the direction of the force the direction of the force will be in the same direction as the moment and the force caused by this moment on this bolt will actually be in the opposite direction so it would be p times l divided by a where a is the distance between the centroid and this bolt all right so if you see here which bolt is going to see higher forces it will be this bolt why because the shear and the moment contribution basically are in the same direction versus on this end basically the shear is acting downward and then the moment is acting in the opposite direction 
All right, so this bolt is gonna be the one closer to the load is gonna be the critical bolt and the one away from the load is gonna be the less critical bolt. So if this were to fail, then this bolt would be to fail. And in your, in our class, you are only asked to find the critical bolt and then do what I just did over here. So essentially get the centroid of the bolts, divide the shear load on that force. So sometimes you could actually have two forces, P and then F, right? You do the same process for both of them and then you apply superposition a linear system you apply superposition so you find the moment caused by f in this case f creates no moments right in this case f would be simply you divide f over 2 here and then f over 2 here and then you can find the total force applied or total shear force applied on that bolt or rivet or pin or whatever again in this case we are using bolts as rivets and they are not anything else we're not using that concept of you know, tightening the bolts and stuff Okay guys, so this is what you will see in our lecture. So the first thing that you have to do is we have to find the centroid, right? How do you find the centroid? Uh, basically, it's pretty simple. You just apply uh, this equation uh, that you probably know. It's like you basically find the center of mass of an object, right? So it will be X, I, A, I. Here, all the bolts have the same area. So you do X. So if I had, if I were trying to find the centroid of all these guys, of all these bolts a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 so i'm gonna do a frame it doesn't really matter where i put the frame right i could put the frame on this bolt or this bolt or that bolt so uh, i'm gonna choose an arbitrary frame and i'm gonna make this guy my zero and this guy my x and then this guy my y so how do i find my x x is gonna be equal to if they have the same area then it's gonna be x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 right divided by the total number of them if i put this the frame in the middle then x a x of one would be negative similarly in the y all right so this is the first step you find the centroid of this bolt group second step is you're gonna find the moment from the point where the load is applied to the centroid right uh, this is uh, uh, like in this case for example right i have this distributed load over here and i have this centro these bolt groups i have four here and then four there and in this case, basically, we can model the system as uh, this uh, distributed load. And uh, basically, I would only have one of them in the middle. And from the center of, so from this force, basically, concentrated force, I'm gonna find the distance between that force P and the centroid of this bolt group. So here, there are four, and then they are basically like a square. So I know the centroid of the square is gonna be in the middle. Then I'm gonna put my moment is gonna be right here at the center. Uh, so the moment is gonna be equal to what? F times L, right? And I will be able to basically find F based on F times L divided by the distance. All right, uh, so let us actually look into uh, more details into how we are, how these procedures will actually apply. So I written this procedures for you guys so uh, you can analyze bolt groups. So the first step is you have to find the centroid of the bolt group. Then you have to find the shear and bending moment at the centroid, right? Uh, essentially, uh, you are finding the moment of the external force applied, right? Relative to the centroid. Uh, the shear, you're gonna divide the force, the outside force, right? Divide by the number of bolts or pins, right? Or rivets um, if RA or BRC basically represent the distances between each bolt and the centroid um, uh, then the moment find the moment is gonna be equal to this all right uh, and uh, what we really assume is that uh, the further that you are you're gonna see the largest moment so this is an assumption that we make but ultimately I want you guys to right and remember this equation so the force caused by the moment on every bolt it's going to be the distance or the radius from that bolt to the centroid divided by the radiuses of all the bolts squared so ra squared plus rb squared so here essentially if i have a bunch of bolts a b c and then d once i found the centroid then this guy is going to be my ra rb rc and then rd right so if i want to find so let's say my moment looked like that 
So the force is going to be perpendicular to the radial line, right? And in the same direction as the moment. So this would be, we call it F double dot. So F double dot is a force due to the moment and uh, F prime is a force due to the shear, right? Okay, so F double dot is going to be equal to the moment multiplied by the radius of A divided by the summation of all these radii squared. So once you have these values, basically, you just use it uh, often and often again. All right, guys, so uh, this is how you find the force on a bolt group as a result of a moment. And the shear force is simply V over M. All right, guys, so let us do a quick example on this. Uh, so what we have here is that we have a 16 kilonewton force applied on this cantilevered beam. And then that beam basically is held onto the wall using four bolts, A, B, C, and then D. Find the resultant load on each bolt. So this is our goal. How do we do this? So the first thing is we have to do what? We have to find the centroid. So we know the centroid of these bolts is going to be located right in the middle because it's a symmetric, uh, symmetrical geometry. The moment is going to be equal to how much? It's going to be equal to 16 times 10 to the 3. Right? Multiplied by how much? Multiplied by, so all units are in millimeters, so 300. Right? plus 50 plus 75 times 10 to the minus 3 a newton times meter right so i basically find the moment caused by this so this is my moment so i have four bolts and i cut my moment and now basically each for that force is going to be distributed equally on all of them regardless of how they are distributed right so that shear force is going to be it's going to have a vertical contribution on each one of them and that we call this f prime is going to be equal to 16 times 10 to the 3 over 4 and then that is on all of them and then force caused by the moment so on this one is going to be like i said perpendicular to the radio on this one is going to be like this and on this one is going to be like this so here in this case the radio is equal right so we said the force f double dot is going to be equal to the moment times the radio let's say of f double dot on a is equal m times ra divided by Ra square plus Rb square plus Rc square plus Rd square. Right, so we get this guy is going to be here B, so F prime B. This guy is F double dot B. This guy is F prime A. This guy is F double dot A. So on and so forth. And what remains is you calculate this angle theta here, right, and then this angle theta, and then you find the x contribution of the forces, which be F double dot sine of this angle. And the uh, vertical is going to be minus F double minus F prime minus F double dot cosine of this angle, right? So you basically obtain the force on B in the X direction and then the Y direction. Uh, Alright, so that is what I just did. So the centroid of the bolt group is at point O because of symmetry. Uh, summing the forces in the y direction obviously is going to be equal to the force itself which is 16 kilonewton the moment is going to be equal to 16 kilonewton multiplied by uh, that force which is 300 plus 50 plus 75 which is equal to 425 millimeters so the moment is 6800 zero zero newton meters so you have to keep track of the direction of this moment right uh, okay so uh, so the radius, so because it's a symmetrical system, then the radius, the radius basically is going to be equal to 96 millimeters, square root of 60 squared plus 75 squared, because they gave us that this distance here is 60 millimeter. And that distance right there is equal to how much? 75 millimeters. And this on all of them, so it's 96 millimeter. Uh, F prime, which is a shear load, you divide it by 4, 16 kilonewton divided by 4, which is 4 kilonewton. Uh, because all of them are the same radius and it's RA squared plus RB squared plus RC plus RD is going to be equal to 4R squared. So it ends up being M over 4R, which is equal to uh, 6,800 divided by 4 times 96, which is equal to 17.7 uh, kilonewton. All right, so uh, which ones are the critical uh, bolts? Uh, B and A and B basically are the critical ones, right? Why? Because... The force due to the moment is in the same direction, is relatively in the same direction as the force due to the shear. Versus here, basically they sort, they sort of cancel each other. It is actually possible that when you have a bolt group, it is actually possible that one of the bolt will actually see no load. 
right? Because the shear will basically essentially cancel the moment. Okay, so now we are going to find the force on B and A, and then these are actually equal because of symmetry. I can find the angle here, right? This angle right there. Uh, so here we're finding the force at C, for example. How do you find the force at C? So I know this angle, right? Because I know that distance, right? From here to here. And I know that distance from here to that, to that right? So it's inverse tangent of 75 over 60. You get this 38.66. And, uh, and then you get, uh, uh, you can from here, basically, uh, using similar triangles, basically, we can actually get that angle here, 51. Or here, this guy is 90 minus 36, right? And this guy would actually uh, be equal to this guy, which is 90 minus 38.66, which is equal to 51.34. Uh, so if you want to get the forces in x direction, it will be equal to what? So 17.7 cosine 51, which is 11.057 uh, 11 uh, kN. Something the forces in y, it will be 17.7 sine 51 minus uh, 4 kN, right? Which is equal to 9.8 kN. So we got the magnitude of the force on both C from here. And because of symmetry, we know FD is equal to FC, and then we know FA is equal to MB is going to be equal to 21 kN. So the critical bolts are A and B. All right, guys. So again, this is a very basic problem. Uh, once you, re if you are really applying it, uh, following the procedures which I provided, right? Again, bolt analysis is the first thing that you have to do is find centroid, right? Then you find a shear load on each bolt. Then you find the moment on centroid on bolt group. centroid and then you find uh, the shear due to moment on each bolt all right guys if you have any questions on any of that stuff please uh, do email me uh, and i would be happy to uh, help you with that uh, we can even open webex uh, and i can walk you through any solution uh, that you would like to know